We try to find the balance between user friendliness and providing information that's critical to making a good recommendation. So it does require some data inputs, uh, information for example on the soil type and the organic matter content, date of planting, things like that. Um, but we also put that in a very user friendly interface. Uh, for example, if you uh, apply the same practice for multiple fields, then we have features in the tool that allows you to, uh, to not have to duplicate those data entry efforts. So the user interf interface is, is uh, as, um, as uh, user friendly as, as possible. And, uh, and that's more on the data input side, but in terms of the results side, we also have a lot of features, uh, like for example, daily alerts, so that you can daily update of the nitrogen status of your field. Um, easy reporting, like PDF reports, that is just, just one click. Um, and notably, I should say, uh, because of we're using sort of the cloud computational model, uh, everything is accessible with, either with desktop computers, laptops, smartphones, tablets. So it's independent of the user platform and so you can access it any, with any device that you want. You can be in fact in the field and you can look at your recommendations. That time is really very minimal. I think for uh, if a person wants to try the tool, it's probably initially you know you'd spend a lot of time on familiarizing yourself with the interface, but everything is really quite user friendly. Um, if you only sort of enter information on one field, it may be something like between five and ten minutes. Uh, we also have a lot of features, uh, say for. Uh, a consultant, uh, they may want to enter information on 350 fields or something like that. So there's features in there that makes that very easy. The, the tool was developed at Cornell University uh, by uh, our research team. And um, uh, we, but we did license it uh, to a, a small startup company and uh, that's just in this past year. So they commercialized it. So there, it, it, does, uh, it is a, now on a, available on a for fee basis. But the, the, it really comes uh, out of university. It was uh, an investment of taxpayer dollars through a grant that we received. And that allowed us to develop the tool. Uh, but we still really want it to be as, as available as possible to the widest group of users because we feel that it has uh, benefits not only to the farmer but also to the environment because we focus on a win-win scenario where we increase farmer profits but we also decrease the environmental impact. Currently uh, we, we offer it uh, in uh, 28 states and uh, basically um, all the Corn Belt states going all the way to the East Coast. First you have to define the location of the field and the zones within the, in the field. And there's a, a, uh, a map uh, interface based on Google Maps that's available. Or you can uh, use a shape file that if you already use the GIS system and then you can basically drop that into uh, our system. Uh, then you have to enter some information on soils. Uh, for example, if your soil is a Floyd silt loam, then you select that um, and you give some basic information on whether you have artificial drainage or not, uh, what the organic matter content of your soil is. So that's the basic soils information. Then we go to management information. Uh, we ask information about tillage. So is it conventional plowing? Is it conservation tillage? Uh, some estimate of how much residue is left on the surface because we uh, that's important in terms of simulating the, the nitrogen dynamics and then also uh, information on uh, how much nitrogen has already been applied. So for example, if you applied some pre-planned nitrogen, say 80 pounds per acre, then you indicate that, you indicate what the formulation is. For example, was it urea or anhydrous ammonia? And you indicate the time of application and the depth of application. With manure, something similar, 
um, time and, and placement and, and also uh, the quality of that manure. Uh, in terms of some of the crop information, um, the, the, the tool asks the relative maturity class of, of the corn, for example, is it 105 day corn, 110 day, day corn, the date of planting and the plant density. And then we also ask for information on the rotation, is it corn after corn, or after soybean, after wheat, etc., or uh, if it's uh, corn following sod, like is common on dairy farms, then we ask for some information about the sod, mostly uh, the percent of legume that's in that sod versus grasses. Uh, the tool basically on a daily basis makes a simulation. And uh, so if you are in the user interface, then you can, uh, then you can basically do a simulation you know, as you, you know, after you have entered all the information. But also we have a feature that we do the simulation for the user automatically every day once the new weather information comes in. And uh, then we send that out by email as what we call a daily alert. So you get a daily update of the nitrogen status of your field. And once you get that uh, in email or you're perhaps on your smartphone, then you can click and you can get more information so you get some graphical outputs and all that so that you can better understand what the recommendation is based on. And well, the, you know, all of the information that we, uh, that we ask for in the user interface is critical. For example, uh, the, the soil type, is it a clay loam, is it a silt loam, is it a silty clay loam? Uh, so some of that information is, is, is basically fixed, um, like the soil type, that doesn't change. Um, some of the information is seasonal, like the date of planting or maybe the maturity class. Um, but uh, the weather is the component that changes on a daily basis. And if you have a, you know, a set of dry days, for example, then uh, you don't have any potential to lose nitrogen through leaching or denitrification. But if you get a lot of rain, then you do have that potential and then you need to adjust for that. Also temperature is important because on very cool days the soil doesn't mineralize much nitrogen, so it doesn't release nitrogen for the crop, uh, versus warmer days where you have more rapid mineralization. So all of those factors interact with each other. That's why we take a modeling approach because uh, of all these interactions and the complexity, but models basically allows you to put that all together and then come up with a recommendation. Okay. The, the tool, uh, if you're on the interface, then you, then you get automatically a report on the interface, but if you want to basically uh, document that in another way, then you can generate a PDF file as a report, and it has a a, a date and time stamp on it so that you can uh, demonstrate to anyone who might be interested uh, or for record keeping you have then a, a formal PDF report that gives you all the information that you have inputted, that you've entered into the system and it also gives you the actual recommendations. It's, I think it's important for simply for record keeping if, uh, you know, if you're a farmer or a consultant so that you have a record of the recommendation. Um, but if you're, say, part of a, a, uh, some environmental program, say a water quality uh, program in a, in a particular watershed, and you'd like to be able to document what the recommendation was and, uh, and whether you followed that recommendation, then you have a very simple way, an easy way to do that.